Good evening, and it's great to have you here with us tonight. I'm Joshua Robinson, and Monday marks the deadline for Washington state workers to be fully vaccinated or lose their jobs. It can be confusing as to who that mandate impacts. So take a look at your screen for a quick breakdown. Anyone working in state run hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living and adult family homes must be fully vaccinated by Monday, October 18th. The governor's proclamation also covers child care providers, K through 12 schools and higher education. Firefighters, state EMTs and paramedics are also covered by the mandate, along with all state workers, including agencies like the Department of Licensing, DSHS and the Washington State Patrol. Also at risk of losing their job on Monday is Washington's highest paid state employee, WSU head coach Nick Rolovich. The Cougs home game just wrapped up a few hours ago, and as of now, we know that Rolovich applied for religious exemption, and the school's decision on that application has yet to be announced. Now, if Rolovich does receive the exemption, it is still possible he loses his job due to the fact that he comes into contact with an excess amount of people within the school daily. If he does not get the exemption and decides to get the vaccine in order to keep his job, he will have to take a two week unpaid leave and miss the upcoming BYU and Arizona State games. This is all in accordance with Governor Inslee's state mandate. Here's what Rolovich had to say in tonight's post game press conference. And of course, he says it's a waiting game for him as it is for all of us. Do you know if you'll be coaching here next week? I, I do not. I don't have my phone. I didn't check my email after the game. I don't think this is in my hands, so uh, I've been settled for a long time on it, and um, I just I believe it's going to work out uh, the right way. And we will get you caught up on what happened in the Cougars game against Stanford coming up later in sports. Meanwhile, the city of Spokane is preparing to lose 38 firefighters on Monday. In comparison, Spokane Valley isn't losing a single firefighter. City of Spokane says that is due to the volume of exemption requests. City officials tell us there are too many accommodations that they'd have to make to work with unvaccinated firefighters. So as we've looked at the totality of the situation, we've looked at considerations for safety of the public, safety of individuals um, in the stations and that our firefighters are working with closely. As we've looked at cost, as we've looked at availability and volume of, of testing and all those different factors combined with the data that showed 24, 25,000 hours lost already to the pandemic, just on quarantine alone and another 2,300 hours or so lost to actual on the job contraction of COVID. All those things taken in totality made it that it was not the right decision to be able to accommodate on the job. Now for most of Spokane's 38 exempt firefighters, their last shifts will be Sunday into Monday morning. Governor Inslee's proclamation says if you are still working and practicing health care at 1201 Tuesday morning, you are in violation of the mandate. And Spokane police are investigating three separate crimes tonight after a series of shootings that all took place within a three hour span. Today we've also learned that one of those shootings was fatal. And these shootings took place over an area that spans from residential areas near schools all the way downtown. The first one took place just after nine o'clock last night near Spokane Community College in the area of North Fisk and East Ermina. According to Spokane Police, officers responded to the report of four gunshots, and when they arrived, they found multiple nine millimeter shell casings in the middle of the intersection. Police say witnesses reportedly saw a black sedan leave going uh, west on East Ermina after the shots were fired. The next reported shooting took place about a mile north of that site in an area around the 3300 block of North Altamont. SPD says they responded just before 930 last night where they found several shell casings of different calibers in a grassy area next to the intersection of North Stone Street and East Liberty Avenue. Officials say they found evidence of four people, three of them with handguns, shooting their weapons in the air. The group then allegedly ran off right through the apartment complex and a woman living in the complex says she heard the gunshots saying they sounded like fireworks. She also says it's not the first time hearing gunfire in the area. In the long run, you do have to protect yourself in some sort of way, um, whether it's locking your door, being secure, watching out for your neighbors, knowing your police people. Nobody was reportedly hurt in this shooting, but police also say they got a report of multiple gunshots being heard in the Andrew Rippon Field area. They do not have any evidence, though, near the park. 
Less than two hours after that shooting, two Spokane police officers were working the downtown bar patrol hearing gunfire less than a block away from them just after midnight on Saturday. SPD says that those officers quickly found a man suffering from multiple gunshot wounds on the sidewalk right by the intersection of West Riverside Avenue and North Washington Street. They also found a very large crowd forming at the scene and SPD needed over 30 units to control and secure the scene. The wounded man was pronounced dead at the hospital. The investigation for all three of these shootings is still ongoing. Anyone with information can contact the Spokane Police Department with the number we have on the bottom of your screen right now. Well, it was a beautiful day today as meteorologist Michelle Boss is joining us to tell us what's in store for the second half of the weekend and into a new week. We get a full weekend of gorgeous weather. We had highs in the 60s and lots of 70s across the area today. Temperatures are, of course, cooling down, but it's not going to be quite as chilly as it has been earlier this week. No snow in the forecast. I'll say that right now. Let's look at temperatures across the region and we've cooled down into the 40s and 50s. 52 in Spokane, 51 in Deer Park in the 40s in Coeur d'Alene. Little bit chilly up in Sandpoint. I think uh, they were one of the cooler spots this afternoon as well, but mid 40s in Moses Lake. Still in the 60s across the Palouse and Lewiston. Just have a few height and clouds out there. We'll see those tomorrow, but otherwise partly cloudy skies. Temperatures bottoming out in the lower 40s here in the Spokane area. And here's a look at the next three days. Mild temperatures continuing tomorrow, which is the highs in the middle and upper 60s again. And then keeping it in the 60s for the upcoming week as well uh, with mostly dry conditions. Well, 30 years ago today, firefighting in the Northwest was changed forever. After the break, we are taking a look back at the firestorm of 91 and the lasting impact it had on wildfire fighting in eastern Washington.